Hello tinkerers, hopefully you've built some fantastic buildings. I've shown you how to build Taipei 101, or maybe the World Trade Center, or maybe you've even created your own amazing building. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to bring all them together and put it into a little scene, put it on a little plinth, so it's nice and ready to be printed. So, you could do a export and then do an import, but a nice easy way if you've been creating your own designs is first select it. So I'm selecting my World Trade Center and then I can go to in my directory, your creations. Click on your creations and then it's got some I've already saved. I've saved some of my buildings already. There's a Burj Khalifa. And what I can do is I can hit create shape. That takes my building and puts it as a shape that I can use in any project that I want. So I'm going to give it a name. One World Trade Center. There you go. I can put a description in, maybe some tags if I want to help myself out. I can also lock it so it prevents the scale from changing. And obviously I don't want it to be a hole, I want it to be a solid. And then I can hit save shape. That'll put it, there you go, into my creations. So jump into a brand new design. Here's my brand new workspace. And now when I go to your creations, I should have all my buildings ready for you. So I can just pull in my one world trade center. There's my one world trade center. I could pull in my Burj Khalifa that I saved earlier. Here's my Burj Khalifa. I could pull in Taipei 101. I could pull in another design that I've been working on. I could scale them. Remember if I hold shift and select any corner, then it scales it all in proportion all at the same time. So I can bring them all down and get them roughly to be in a very similar vein. So if I've got them to wrong scale, it's nice and easy to bring them all together. So here you go. I've got my fantastic buildings from all over the world, all being created by myself or some of my followers into this design. So I'm going to create a plinth. I can create a plinth in many different ways. I really like just using basic shapes to create a nice plinth. I could just start with a nice flat circle, stretch it out to an oval. I want it nice and low, so just form that, bring it down, is a nice round plane. If I could duplicate that, and then obviously I know bringing it up, it's four wide. So if I bring it to four, that's sitting on top of one another. If I scale it slightly, then make sure I'm holding shift, and I've kind of got a one on top of the other. It kind of creates a nice plane shape for me, and then I can use my align tool to align to center, and then center again. There's one type of plinth I could do. I could do a more even simpler plinth with just a large rectangle. I could put all my designs on. Bring it down. Oops, Daisy, I was holding shift. Bring it down and I like four as a nice standard. Click on it, duplicate using this duplicate tool at the top here. Pull it up, bring it up. If I can't get it to four, remember I can just click on the side and make it full. And then I can scale that down nicely, holding shift, scales everything at once. Select them both by either clicking and making that red box. Align tool at the top right, align and align. Ooh, did I miss that? Yeah, grab them again and align. Make sure I've aligned them in the middle and the middle. And there you go, I've got two nice simple plimps I could start to work out and put together. I could then grab my models. Obviously they're eight off the ground, so I can just bring them up. Let's just take them like seven off the ground and then I can start putting them on and scaling them so they fit onto my plinth. Hold shift, there's one down. Here's type A101, I need to bring it up to about seven, there we go. One more trade center, there you go, I've got three of them on there. All this does is when it comes to printing, it comes and nicely ties them all together and I kind of get this lovely kind of skyline that I've created with all my wonderful buildings. Obviously I can scale them to however I want and I can position, position them how I feel fit. I could obviously, if I've made up my own building, I could stick it on, stick it in on one in the middle, right in the middle and nice and have it nice and highlighted in the middle. Another real nice one I like to use is hexagons. So if I bring out my hexagon, let's take my hexagon nicely out. Let's have this 50 on this side. It makes things nice and nice and easy. Bring this down to four. 
There you go. So I could just have that as a plinth. But what I'd like to do is obviously hexagon is a tessellating shape. So I could duplicate it, bring it out. I could put it together. So how wide is it? So that's a question I need to have myself ask myself when I'm duplicating. So I'm just going to do undo. Always wonderful. Click on one. I can click find a how. So it's 50 one direction. So I bring it 50. It's going to be minus 50, isn't it? Because I'm moving it negative minus 50. Here we go. And then that's perfectly aligned. And then I want to duplicate one more. And easy way to do it is if I take one of these and one of these by holding shift and just clicking once on them, grouping them together. That makes one of them one. One of them stick. That sticks one of them together. And then I've got one more. Remember, I duplicated and I can bring that out. There you go. There it is. And what I can do is I can click on this one, click on this one, align and bring them together. So perfectly it's going to fit into that slot. So I can then slide it back in. And there you go. It's going to perfectly fit into that slot. Always look at it from different angles. Zoom in a little bit. I think I've still got a gap there, haven't I? Yeah, you can see a thin little gap there. So I just need to move it one more. There we go. There we go. It joins it nice together. Yeah, that's good. And then I can select them again using the red box. Click and hold. Drag over red box and group them together. And there we go. Seals them all together. And then to make a nice plinth for that, I can duplicate that. And how high was it? It was four high. That's why I keep a nice standard. I move that up and move it four. So I'm sitting on top of one of it. Hold shift. Scale everything down together. Make sure it's still four high. It's gone to 3.75, so I can just make that to four again. Grab them both. Align again. Align in the middle this way and this way. And I've got a nice plinth for for my work to go on. I'm going to duplicate that, bring it across. So I could have one nice across here. So I could have one there. I could have a one world trade center sitting in this area. I could have Taipei 101 sitting in this corner. And then I could have the Burj Khalifa. Let's move around, always checking it from different angles. And duplicate with Burj Khalifa, and I can move that onto my plinth this side. There you go. So I've kind of got a cool plinth that way. So I've got three different ideas for different types of plinths. I'm sure you can come up with your own. What we can also talk about is doing a nice label. So I like using a wedge for a label because you can either have a straight up this wedge, or you can bring this in, or you can have a angled label. Yeah. And then I just have to grab some text. Remember, the text is always lying down as it says. And what am I going to call this? I'm going to call it B Town. So bring in the text B Town. Here we go. So B Town, I need to shrink it down slightly. Now I only want it to be a thickness of about two because I'm just wanting it to stick out. And then I look at it from this angle, then just grab the tilt. I can rotate it around, and if I hold shift, remember it does it in 45 degree segments. So there you go, I've turned it up to 90. And then I can bring these together, can't I? So I can bring this into here. If I need to just find adjust it, then I remember I can use the arrow keys to get it perfect. I can align it if I want to align it. So let me get this out. There we go. Move it this way. This is just using my arrow keys. And then I can bring it up. There we go. And I've got a B-Town label. Now if I group them all together using that, then obviously I can scale all at the same time, can't I? So I can scale it up and down. Remember at any point if I want to be able to see it, I know it's made it the same color, it's quite hard to see now. But I can also remember at any point, ungroup in the top right hand corner here, and it turns it back. So I can scale by grouping and then ungroup at the end. And I can start to put these at four high. So it's eight high. And then I can group it, make sure it's the right, nice, same scale. And I can put it onto my model, just like that. And if I want to be able to see it, ungroup. And there you go, I've got B Town on my model. Let's do undo and undo and bring it back out so it's nice and. 
big for me. Another thing you could do is it doesn't have to be straight up, it could be on a curve, so it could be on the other side of a wedge. So let's just spin this wedge around. So grab that, hold shift, and it turns it all the way around 180. Yeah, and you'll see now it's not sitting on there, so you've got to be very careful here. Be nice and careful. So you just grab the tilt function, you tilt it, and so you can get it perfectly right. And it's still floating off, so this is where you can use the arrow keys or be very careful and you can just make sure it is set into your wedge and then I've got B-Town on a nice little angle and I can again select it, hold, make the red square group together and then I could put it on, let's put it on this one so it needs to be a tight to fit on, there you go, I'm going to have it 7 just so it just nicely sits in there and then it's way too big so I can scale it down Holding shift, let's scale it right down. And I could fit it nicely on here. And if I wanted to pop out, I could ungroup it. Remember when you're printing, obviously if you've got one color plastic in there, then it will be one tone. And then I can have B-Town on there. So hopefully that was a quick little video. The hard ones were making all the fantastic buildings. I just thought I'd show you how you can make some fantastic plimps for them. So when you get to printing off, they look absolutely fantastic and presented wonderfully. Look forward to seeing some of your creations.